Welcome back. So let's get back out to D.C. where Joyce and Natalie have a live guest. Yes, they are there with Washington State Republican Party Chair Susan Hutchison. So, uh, Susan, you saw the size of the rally and estimated, what, uh, 500,000 people. I think much larger than the size of the inaugural yesterday. Your reaction? Oh, I don't think it was bigger than the inaugural. No way. And so. I've been here before. You know, I grew up in D.C. and I was here for the 1976 celebration on July 4th. So um, I, I think it was a great turnout for them. They are probably very happy about that and worldwide as well. But I also observed that it was confusing as to what the message was. You had a, a communist activist, Angela Davis. You had Michael Moore, who's never been known to be about women. And then you had moms with young daughters and profane and vulgar messages on posters. It was very confusing as to what this really was about. I would say, as I, I observe it, it's basically the Democratic talking points. And uh, I, I think that their voices were heard worldwide. And, uh, and Donald Trump and the administration, no doubt, took note. So you didn't hear the message of women's rights, equal rights, oh, absolutely. LGBTQ? But, but that's certainly part of the Democrats' messaging, their message points. There was also global change or uh, climate change and so forth. So those are the talking points, and they've all been emphasized throughout the whole campaign season. It's been a very interesting mood here in D.C. this week, and no question the country remains divided. Yesterday, a lot of people were looking to President Trump to unify during his speech. Do you think he did that? Well, you know, the pundits uh, that are on the mainstream media certainly uh, labeled it not that way, but all the people that I talked to yesterday, and, you know, I'm a longtime reporter, so I ask <laughs> questions everywhere I go. I'd say, what did you think of the speech? And people said, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And basically what they loved about it was that it was no nonsense. And he talked often about being about all Americans. And I particularly loved his emphasis on, on the forgotten people, the ones who do need government's help. And that's what he's going to do right away, fixing the problems in our inner cities, fixing all kinds of problems that it prevented our good citizens from having jobs and that's what people want. What do you with say the, to the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, with the diversity in the country, are you comfortable with the lack of diversity in his cabinet selection so far? Well, you know, I don't think it lacks diversity. I think we've got, you know, we've got, if you're talking about racial diversity, we've yes. got Ben Carson, we've got uh, uh, Elaine Chow, we've got a number of outstanding women, a number of extraordinary but others. No Hispanics. Well, you know, I think one of the things that you're going to find is that there are an awful lot of terrific people of all races who support Donald Trump and are going to be tapped in many, many positions, not necessarily the ones that are the most noticeable right now because they've been named. Trump supporters love the fact that he gives straight talk, but some of his rhetoric, very abrasive, controversial. Does he need to tone it down? And what about his Twitter account? Well, you know, I don't think he's going to give up Twitter. No way. No way, no how. Um, I think that um, we're going to get used to a president going directly to the people in this day and age of technology where, that we all use, by the way, to get our messages out. You know, when you look at everything that's going on, even today's march on Twitter, you keep moving through and watch the comments. Everybody's expressing themselves. So I think we're all getting used to it. And uh, I think that Donald Trump will be very, very effective in his use of Twitter. Do you think that he will make more of an effort, uh, or maybe you think he's making enough of an effort to reach beyond his base, which obviously he has, but to reach beyond his base to those uh, who have not bought in yet? Well, I just think it's very important that we not lose sight of the fact that he got a large electoral victory, which is how you win the presidency, which means that the people of this country support his policies. But as we go forward, and this is, I heard you talk about some people we're looking forward with hope. And yes. I do believe that there is a hopeful tone in the country right now as well. And uh, I talked to a man today who's Swiss and who lived years ago in New York and thought about becoming a U.S. citizen and never got around to it. He said after yesterday, I want to become a U.S. citizen. Really? Wow. Uh, we're out of time, but you were at the inauguration and at the balls, and you must have been just ecstatic. Well, I think, you know, right behind us was the inaugural ceremony yesterday. That was, that was a, you know, uh, shivers up your spine kind of moment. And I, I think it's that way for all Americans who really care about democracy in this country. It makes me so proud. And uh, that we have this peaceful transfer of power. You know, back in eight years ago, Republicans weren't so happy with what was going on. And so all of us sort of, okay, 
in four years we can make a change. You know, that's it's how it works. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It is. It is extraordinary, that part of our democracy, I have yeah. to say. Susan, thank you so much for thank being with you. us. You're welcome. You've done a great job this week. Why, thank you. As have you, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have. I wish we had more. Uh, back to you. We'll have to have you on our show in the next week or two I'll when you get back to, to town it. because there's so many more questions that I'd like to talk with you about. That would be great. Guys, all right, Joyce and Natalie and Susan, thanks so much. We